Welcome everyone to this uh, seamlessly English introduction to Magna Arnold's theory on emotions. It's called the appraisal theory because she reintroduced the cognitive elements of emotions going back to Aristotle and Thomas Aquinas and it's still very much alive and this is very relevant for the history of the studying of emotions to our days. So Magda B. Arnold was born in Moravia in 1903, now it is the Czech Republic, and she died in the USA in 2002. She lived for almost 20 years in Canada. She moved there with her husband and the two daughters. Eventually, uh, he left the family and Magda moved some years later to the United States. So from the late 40s, she lived steadily in the United States. Her most renowned book is Emotion and Personality, 1954. Maybe someone can re recall uh, Motivation and Personality, uh, Abraham Maslow's work, so the very same year. Um, but her book is based on emotion within a more anthropological theory. So uh, let's review the general diagram of the passions according to Aristotle and Thomas Aquinas. At the center is the person, and they called uh, the arduous good and the sensible good the objects of our will. And there are also evils of different kinds that we have to face. So they call it the objects of our emotions. The, the theory of objects is very much relevant for the Aristotelian and Thomistic way of understanding science in different ways. Then there is a timeline. So uh, when these objects or goods are absent or present, different emotions would emerge. So in almost every case, we have absent or present evils or goods. Uh, apart from that, on the on our left, upper left, uh, we have artus goods that that seems to be unattainable or attainable. So we will see how there are some pairs or some ones isolated emotions that regard these different present or absent objects. So there are some core, there are two core emotions. The first one that de uh, develop uh, facing uh, the, the good is uh, love. And they call it, uh, generally speaking, love. And the on the uh, lower part, hatred, so a general aversion. Coming from the Platonic proposal, they explain the internal resources as parts of the soul, of, as parts of the mind. So they say there is a part that follows the gratification, that is very much sensible to gratification. They call it the concupiscible appetite. On the left, we have the irascible appetite. Ira uh, stays for anger. So something that reacts to objects that require some effort. So we go back to the right part. When a sensible good is absent, we just feel desire. But when it is present, we feel joy. On the lower part, when a sensible evil is absent, we feel, again, general aversion. Some use withdrawal. Withdrawal means also the action. We are talking, we are focusing on the uh, primal emotion, not the action. So when it is present, we feel sadness or one of its synonyms. Let's go to the Ardus goods on the upper left part. So when an Ardus non-present good if, uh, is attainable, from our point of view, we develop hope, we feel hope. And when it seems unattainable, we feel despair or hopelessness. On the lower part, it's a bit more complex. Uh, when an absent, we, we consider an absent evil, we can develop just fear or daring. So uh, uh, facing the very same object, we can develop two different Two different emotions depending on the person or also depending on our training our capacity to uh, 
be in charge of our emotions. When it is present, we can develop anger to face that evil situation or object. So let's see how Arnold translates more or less the same map uh, in her own terms, but following the very, uh, the very same bl uh, blueprint. So at the center, the person, the objects, she, she called it beneficial or harmful objects or convenient objects, but it's exactly the same. She, she uses the, also the, the timelines, the time dimension, she stresses the fact that the beneficial objects are when are they are absent because she coincides with Aristotle and uh, Aquinas that when the beneficial object or the arduous good are achieved, we feel the very same thing that on the right side. So we feel joy, we feel different kinds of gratifications. We are not distinguishing them qualitatively, but as a basic emotion, they are more or less the same. That is why we don't divide here the, the beneficial object in absent or present. We consider it as always as absent for uh, distinctive emotions. So again, at the center, uh, we have two core or general emotions. That is love or liking and hate or dislike. Then she doesn't talk about uh, the appetites. She just uh, group groups the, the emotions in impulse emotions and contending emotions. Um, it is very relevant for her that the appraised difficulty on attaining or facing different situations or objects. It, it will be a distinctive element to understand the different emotions. So let's go to the upper uh, right part. So one thing on desire, very much the same of the uh, Thomistic desire. Uh, on the present beneficial object we feel delight or joy. In the lower part we have the, the absent harmful object. Uh, we develop aversion or recoil and when it is present we feel sorrow or, or sadness. Let's go to the left part of our map. So. When a beneficial object seems attainable, we develop hope. And uh, when it seems unattainable, we feel despair. Again, just uh, is almost uh, referring directly to Aquinas and Aristotle. Then we have when a harm, harmful object is absent, we can develop fear or in an extreme situation, terror. It is in, uh, interesting that she is already introducing some nuances that are also included in the Thomistic full proposal, but she introduces it directly in the distinction of the basic emotions. So fear may be terror sometimes. So, and, uh, or we can feel, again, daring or courage, we can develop it, or it can become brashness in an extreme way. Then on the right part, we have merely dejection or anger and in extreme situations, desperation. So, uh, important nuances, but again, the very same map. The direction of emotions. Uh, Arnold distinguishes between positive and negative emotion, but it doesn't mean that emotions are good or bad in themselves. They all are all at the service of the preservation of life. The distinction implies that some emotions drive us to move away from what we consider as harmful, while others stimulate us to seek out what we perceive as we perceive as beneficial, or to face something difficult and perhaps unavoidable in order to overcome it. To overcome it. So the distinction involves orientation, that is to say, the first information about what to avoid or turn away from, or what we may seek or obtain. So again, we uh, copy the, uh, our general map. We will avoid all the arrows to simplify just a bit our general geography of emotions. And the person, so love and liking uh, and hate and dislike are at the core of our emotions. 
So we have the impulse emotions on the right, containing emotions on the left. Uh, and here the, the whole family, the very same way we have seen in the previous slide. What else? Okay, she distinguishes, as I have already said, between positive and negative emotions, depending on the first impulse they provide us. So, love and liking are positive. They make us uh, search for or foster our desire to get something, while hate I dislike in the opposite direction. So here is easy to, to see the upper part on the, on the right, that wanting and desire and delight uh, and joy are positive emotions, while in the lower part have aversion, recall, sorrow and sadness. So it is uh, perfectly symmetrical, upper and lower parts of the, of the scheme. We will see that it is not the same in the, in the left part. So hope seems obvious that it is a positive emotion. It moves us, it drives us to search for something difficult but attainable, while despair moves us to draw back, to step back from something that seems unattainable. And there is a, another nuance introduced by Arnold again. It is included in the, in the Aristotelian and Thomistic outlook, but not included directly in this uh, original distinction of, of emotions. So, but it is very important so that we can overcome or we can avoid. So the very first information within emotion, it's significant to evaluate if we can overcome or if we should avoid something. So, to overcome difficult situations, harm from objects, if they are absent, we, we feel we can overcome them. So we develop daring, courage, again, or rashness. And in the lower part, uh, anger is also uh, a positive emotion because it, help, it helps us to overcome difficult situations, difficult or harmful objects, while dejection and fear or terror are negative. So that is the full um, explanation. And you see it is the, the harmful or the way we can face harmful objects is richer, is, more, uh, is, is wider than the other sections of our map. And that's all, thank you very much. And um, feel free to check also the Italian version of this same video.